What's going on and welcome back to another gear review and setup and in this video we're going to be going over the Blackhawk Strike Quick Release Medical Pouch Molly as well as have a couple of injects for the Vehicle QD Med Pouch. Now when it comes to both of these systems they are very very similar with the predominant difference being the method of attachment whether you want to go with a Molly system or a seat headrest attachment system. So uh, Everything else for this pouch, external and internal, is almost identical, maybe with a minor difference in the size of the Velcro up top here, but when it comes down to it, it's pretty much set up the, the same. Uh, that specific difference, like I said, being the Molly, if you wanna Molly this to your kit, a seat back panel, or some sort of other Molly panel inside of a box or loadout room or kit room, whatever the case may be, or if you want that uh, seat headrest configuration and set up for your vehicle so that way it's really hard to miss the med kits inside of your vehicle and it kind of gives it that you could say ejection seat look where it's like oh hey that's right there that red handle that's pulling the in the event of emergency type of a handle so uh, with that I'm gonna dive right into this so that way you can see what's going on. Uh, when it comes to the Molly version, you do have a buckle up top here that kind of locks the entire uh, med kit on the Velcro Molly panel on the back side so that way it doesn't come off in the event. Uh, let's say you put it inside of a vehicle, vehicle gets in a car accident, um, it's not gonna get thrown around inside of the vehicle, it's gonna stay right where it's at. Uh, so you do have that securing buckle, you have a little bit of Velcro up front so that way you can run uh, little medical patches. For stuff that I throw in vehicles, I like to have color on it just because it makes it very easily identifiable in comparison to tactical stuff where it's gonna be a little bit more subdued. So that rips right off. I have hair ties on the, uh, or connected to the Molly so that way I can run tourniquets on the side of this. I'm just gonna throw that off to the side for right now so that way uh, we can go through all of the contents that are actually inside of this. So you got dual zippers with these little pull finger tabs which is awesome makes it really easy to grab all of those and then i have this pretty heavily set up to be able to take care of everything that you need when it comes to um, dealing with airways dealing with bleeding and massive hemorrhaging um, setting up ivs uh, treating and preventing hypothermia and going pretty much through that entire march sequence when it comes down to it so uh, with that i'm just gonna pull everything out and then briefly go through everything and then show you how I have this configured and set up. So uh, as you can see, kind of the top is gonna be everything when it comes to immediately grab type stuff. You have your gloves, you have your iodine and cleaning wounds and all that. Some chem lights, a Sharpie. You have your t, uh, t tri c card to be able to annotate the injury and how you've treated that injury. And then you have your scissors to be able to cut clothes off. A little bit of airway stuff on this side and IV and then more bleeding, hemorrhaging, and dealing with uh, uh, serious injuries on this other side. So, pulling the rest of this stuff out. Pretty sure I have about enough to be able to treat uh, two casualties inside of here. So, pretty good setup overall. A couple chest seals, some ace bandage. SWAT T tourniquet, not great for uh, tourniquet use, but really good as pressure dressing, especially for uh, animals in the event that you're like a canine dude. So, so that's pretty much everything that's inside of this pouch. When it comes to internal components, you do have two large pockets on both sides to be able to throw a lot of equipment in there. You have a little bit of a tie down here. So if I wanted to, I could tie these scissors down. Uh, you can add those little retractable lanyards if you want to throw that inside of there as well. I've seen that ha or seen guys do that as well. So you have some options when it comes down to uh, overall setup. Um, but like I said, you have two big pockets. You have multiple sets of elastic on this side. Uh, you have dual elastic right here so you can stack stuff and then you do have some nylon loops to throw some smaller items on that side so um, can put a lot of smaller stuff on this side and then you have two large elastic loops on this other side for larger things that's why i put all the bleeding stuff on this side and all my accessory stuff kind of on this side it just helps with space and management of all of that so uh, as you can see this is everything though when it comes to what i have in here i have uh, chest seals i have the SWAT T tourniquet, ace bandage, a space blanket for dealing with hypothermia, scissors cutting everything off that you may need to cut off when it comes to dealing with that uh, injury, uh, duct tape so that way if there's any plastic on the table or any plastic wrappings I can take this duct tape 
the plastic wrappings and turn those into improvised chest seals if I need them. So that way I'm not going out and purchasing a lot of these and I'm using what I uh, have readily available to be able to deal with those uh, sucking chest wounds and all that. And then, like I said, with all that extra plastic, you can add your, you can take this plastic film and use that as a chest seal, plastic bags, round the table, you can see all of it. So uh, chem lights, Sharpies, gloves, uh, cleaning stuff, T tri C uh, card. I've got some combat gloves. I'll combat gauze. I'll probably get a little bit of extra just so that way I have the full ability to be able to treat two casualties. Rolled gauze or compressed gauze, and then I've got my IV stuff over here, and then some airway over here with the needle D's as well as the nasal pharyngeals. So we have some options when it comes down to um, how much you want to put in here. You can put as much to pretty much treat two casualties within reason or have like two small individual med kits inside of this or you can just have one really robust med kit for one person so um, when it comes to vehicle setups you can absolutely set this up on a vehicle panel or you can even improvise and make some straps or set it up in a way to where you can just run this on the headrest so you can have one of these on one headrest that's kind of dual purpose or i should say dual purpose but has the capability of uh, treating two casualties and then you have one that's more robust for more specific stuff so it gives you some options when it comes to overall so you have options that's what it boils down to uh, setting this thing back up though when it comes to putting everything back in there I start with the big stuff first throw that in throw that ace wrap inside of there um, actually I'll throw that on top of the uh, chest seals because probably more like every every injury that I've seen when it comes down to it or more so just the injuries in general I've seen very very few sucking chest wounds um, most of all that was in training and it was kind of just one of those things not as likely to happen because of the plates and everything that you have on but they do happen uh, I throw that in the back just because the more likely items that I'm going to use is the ace wrap the uh, space blanket pressure dressings combat gauze and all that so Kind of thinking ahead what are you more likely to use it's probably going to be the stuff that is going to be dealing with extremity wounds so um anyways getting back into it I'll take the uh space blanket throw it in that pocket as well with the swat t tourniquet like i said that swat t is really good for canine stuff not a great tourniquet when it comes down to it but when it comes to uh pressure dressing stuff this thing is phenomenal um, I know a couple of law enforcement guys that were running those. They were breaking them when they were trying to apply them as tourniquets, but they found real quick, hey, man, this thing is actually really, really good as a pressure dressing over ace wrap if you want something real, real tight. So it uh, gives you some, gives you something to think about. So uh, next, throw in all of the combat gauze in there. Like so. And that kind of covers down on everything on the massive bleeding and hemorrhaging side. And then the last few things that I have over here will kind of go on top. When it comes to this other side, start with the IV stuff, throw that in at the bottom. <coughs> throw that uh, syringe with saline in there as well. And then I'll take my two uh, needle decompressions and I'll run these through the uh, nylon loops and then these nasal pharyngeals will just go right on top. Pull those all the way through. And then take that petroleum jelly, just throw that right there. And that's kind of the general configuration for everything, pushing everything down, making sure everything is kind of nice and snug. And then I just lay a few of the other things on top, like so. Scissors will go right here. Like so. I just go one elastic loop for the tape, so that way it's easy to pull. I'll actually throw this these iodine pieces over here now. And then the T-Tri-C card just through the bottom as well. I just take this excess 550 cord or neck kind of necklace piece, stuff that in there as well. And that's just kind of what it looks like when it's all put together. And then from here, 
Just take both sides, pinch them together. That way nothing falls out. When you're trying to zip this guy back up, make sure you're not grabbing any of the uh, plastic in there. And voila, there you have it. Extend that out a little bit so that way I can reattach it. Take your Velcro Molly back to it. Put that back on and then buckle it back into place. I have seen guys run that buckle through these zippers to keep those zippers from uh, coming undone. I would recommend against that just because you're going to, in a stressful situation, be trying to pull that buckle through those zipper loops. I just prefer running the zipper loops like that or just one side or the the other so that's what that looks like when it comes together so with that i really don't have anything else to say um i do think it's an awesome system it's very competitive when you're looking at the uh sotec viper i believe it's what it's called is another kind of uh, seat headrest configuration that you can run uh, inside of a vehicle so um if you want something a little bit more affordable, you can go with the Blackhawk or you can spend the $150 on the Sotec system and have something that just pulls right out of the side like some of the other configurations that are out in the industry. Uh, for example, from AWS with their uh, belt mounted uh, med kit as well as uh, some of the other systems from like Blue Force Gear where it's uh, just a pull tab rips right out and you're uh, employing all of those medical supplies in those scenarios so you have some options when it comes to other products and i think this is a pretty good product when it comes down to it you can fit a lot in this over some of those other systems so if you want an affordable package with a lot of space to throw a lot in there especially for something that's going to be permanent inside of typically a vehicle or a box case range bag this is definitely a really good option so uh, with that if you have any questions please feel free leave a comment we'll help you out in any way that we can in answering those questions like share and subscribe and we'll see you next time